we can now go ahead and do a physical orientation to our known point. Our orientation is to a known point when you're set up onto a known point. Okay, so we're finished with our orientation. As you can see, our orientation was to the furthest point. Let's go ahead and measure our checkpoint to the nearest point. Welcome to another theory session about the Tuttle Station. In today's theory, we'll discuss a little bit more about orientation. Okay, so why do we orientate with a Tuttle Station? Well, simply when we use, make, make use of a GPS, we always know where our geographical position and location is. But with a Tuttle Station, because you don't know where your geographical location is, it's important to tell the Tuttle Station and the software exactly where you are. And that is why we do a physical orientation to a known point. Because this will enable the software on the Tuttle Station to know exactly where you are, to be able to do all the relevant computations, setting out, doing a DTM, everything to the correct scale and geographic location. And when we look at the term known point, well, this is just a point with a physical coordinate. What this means is that specific point where you are orientating to and we have set up to be able to get the geographic location is a point with a physical coordinate. One of the key principles when we look at orientation with the turtle station is to always orientate to the furthest point first. Why do we do this? Well, it's simple. When we orientate to the furthest point first, we know exactly what the error will be. For example, when we measure any distance between our furthest point and our turtle station, the error will be almost minimal. As soon as we measure points beyond our furthest point of orientation, we actually in fact do not have any guarantee of what accuracies those points will be measured at. Now that we have a bit a better understanding of exactly what the orientation is, let's go into a bit more detail of the known point. So what is a known point? So this is a benchmark or a beacon, an iron peg or any physical point. Um, it can be a nailing ground with a Y, X, Z or lat long and height coordinate. This is a known point. But a known point does not necessarily have to have known coordinates from the start when you work with a turtle station. You can orientate to a point and only later come back to measure those points and do a shift on those points to the correct geographical location of those control points. So it does not necessarily have to be known from the beginning. It can be a local survey and at a later stage you can orientate those exa existing points to either cadastral or benchmarks or beacons um, when you make use of a GPS you can come back and measure in those known points and then just do a shift on your data uh, to accommodate those known points. So basically a known point is just a point that we can revisit our site again. That is the main concept of a known point. It must be always known and always visible and be a point where we can always come back to when we come back to site. If we have done a design on our local coordinates, we must still be able to set up, orientate to that known point, whether it was on a local survey or not, and be able to do the work required on that specific site. Okay, so now that we know a bit more about the orientation and a bit more what a known point is when we use a turtle station, let's talk a bit about sighting your prism. Okay, so how do you sight your prism correctly and how do you know in fact that your rod where your prism is on is correct? So one of the first methods you'll use is place your prism that it's facing you, use your turtle station, aim to the very bottom of that rod where the known point is actually located. Make sure that it is exactly center and then tilt your object lens vertical axis up until you get to the center of the prism and see if there's any misalignment in that axis. If there's not, at least you know that it's correct. Um, then you can turn your prism, let's say 90 degrees, so that you can see your prism from the side. Make sure that it's bubble again. Then go 
look through your throttle station again. Aim to the very bottom of your rod that is placed on the known point and then go move your vertical axis up until you're more or less in the center of the prism again. If there's any difference between the two, you know that you've got a rod error and you first need to adjust your rod correctly before you continue with any survey work. So as soon as you know that your rod is 100% correct, the next thing you'll want to do is to make sure that the rod is in fact placed exactly in the center of your point. Great, so in this figure here, you'll be able to see that this is more or less what you want the actual location to be on your point. You'll see that there's a, quite a dot in the middle of everything. That means that your rod is set up as center as possible. So if you imagine the tip of the rod, which is sharp, to be on exactly this small point, then you know you're in the center of the point and you'll obviously have the minimal amount of error when you either do orientation or when you're measuring in new known points or new traverse points uh, that's the way you want to do it in order to eliminate any error going forward with your total station okay and then as soon as this is sorted another very important point to consider is to make sure that your focus on your total station is always clear so that you don't have a blurry vision which would maybe cause you to not align your prism exactly in the center and which might might automatically introduce an error in your survey so always make sure that your focus is 100 percent um, and make sure that there's no obstruction in the way between you and the prism especially if you're measuring a reflectorless why because with a reflectorless measurement it normally takes the first reflection or, or the first bounce that it receives from the turtle station um, it will give you that exact distance so if it is for example a tree in with if there's a tree in the way or a leaf um, or even some grass then it would automatically reflect on those objects and not on your prism which will then again cause some error on your side so always make sure that there's no obstructions when you sight your prism